video, we'll be talking about Dijkstra's algorithm. So Dijkstra's algorithm is used to find the shortest path from a node to all the other nodes in a network. Now, to do that, what we, what we do is we consider the entire network as a graph, and then we use Dijkstra's algorithm to compute the least cost path from one node, which we know as the, called the source, to all other nodes in the network. Now, once Dijkstra's algorithm computes these paths, these are used to get the forwarding durable at different nodes. Now, let's get some notation. Now, let's assume that there are two nodes X and Y, and if these two nodes are connected by a direct link, we denote the cost of this direct link by C X comma Y. Now, if two nodes are not directly connected to each other, that they are not direct neighbors, then this cost is denoted by infinity. Now, we are going to calculate this path from a node to all other nodes in the network. So this is going to be an algorithm, and it's going to be an iterative algorithm, which takes a number of steps. Now, during the, this process of this algorithm, there is going to be an estimate of the least cost path. That estimate is what we store in dv, which is the current cost of the path from the source to some destination v. Now, to be able to track the actual path, we will need to keep track of predecessor nodes, which is, these are pointers which will be later used to calculate the path, the actual path, and that we denote by p with v in brackets. Now, n prime is the set of nodes to which the least cost path is definitely known. So if there are n nodes in this network, n prime is the set of nodes to which the least cost path is known. So initially, n prime would be just the source because the source knows the path from itself to itself. Now as the algorithm moves forward, the source would know the paths to certain nodes in the network. And what we hope uh, and what Dijkstra's algorithm will actually achieve is when the algorithm terminates, you will know the path from the source to all other nodes in the network. So now, let's first try to look at the Dijkstra's algorithm. Then we will work out a couple of examples to understand this algorithm. So it's going to be a little dry because I'm first going to just talk about the algorithm, but bear with me and then we'll look at a couple of examples to help you understand this concept. So initially, we have this initialization step, and then we will have a loop, which is the, basically the pseudocode for running the algorithm. Now, I want to say that there are more efficient implementations of the Dijkstra's algorithm. This one is a simple algorithm, which would achieve the desired result. So first, in the initialization process, we have n prime, which recall that is a set of nodes to which the path is actually known, which only consist of u, which is the source node from which we are going to calculate the path. Once again, Dijkstra's algorithm is used to calculate the path from a source node to all other nodes in the network. Okay, so now in line three, what we do is we have this for loop. So if we first look at all the nodes, which are neighbors of, of u. Okay, now so basically, if a node is adjacent to you, that is, it's a neighbor, it's directly connected to you, then we know the cost to reach V from you. That is the direct cost, which, if what we looked in the previous slide is C U comma V. So we update DV, which is the least cost path, to reach this node V from you as C U comma V, which is in line five. Now, if a node is not directly connected to you. So in the beginning, we would not know how to reach that node. So for all the other nodes, dv is infinity because initially we don't know how to reach those nodes from you. Now, from line eight is what we, is what we have, the Dijkstra's algorithm. So first, it's, it's going to be a loop. So our first job, which is in line nine, is to find a node w which is not in n prime. So recall that when the loop starts for the first time, n prime just contains u. So you're gonna find a w which is not in n prime, such that dw is a minimum. 
So initially, only u is an n prime, so all the other nodes are a potential, have a potential to be w. Now, you're going to find, so initially there are a bunch of dw's, essentially the nodes which are directly connected to u. So you're going to find that neighbor, the first step, which is, which is the least cost path from u. Now you're going to add that node da, the w to n prime, so in the first step. Now what's going to happen is you're going to update the cost dv to all other nodes in the network that are not in n prime because we don't need to update the nodes in n prime because we already know the least cost path to all those nodes in n prime so what is that formula so the line 12 gives us that formula so how do we update that so dv is equal to the minimum of the current estimate dv and the estimate dw plus c of w comma v so i know that this is a little hard to understand but i just want to go through the algorithm first before we go through the example so just bear with me and try to uh, understand this i'm pretty sure that when we get to the example you will appreciate it better so you have a current estimate dv for reaching a node v now we just added this node w to n prime so there is an estimate of reaching this node w from u which is dw so what we are going to see is whether adding this node w gives us a new path to v which is lower than which has a cost that is lower than the cost that we already have so this cost of reaching v starting from u through w Okay, so what we're doing, we're going from u, we're trying to reach v and we're passing through w. The estimate of that path, the cost, is going to be dw, which is the cost to reach w from u, and then the direct link cost, which is c of w comma v. Now that is the cost if we go through w. Now this is a new path that we have. We're going to compare this cost with the old estimate that we have for v, which is dv. And whichever is minimum, that is if the new path is minimum, we're going to update dv. Otherwise, dv is going to remain the same. That is, if if, d, if this new estimate is higher than the estimate that we already have, that just means that the, adding this new node w doesn't benefit uh, getting a new path to v. Okay. Now, we'll repeat this process until all nodes have been added to n prime that means that this process would continue until we knew the cost to all our nodes in the network starting from u okay i know that this has been a little hard to understand so let's go through an example anytime that you find understanding the example harder go i'll encourage you to go back to the algorithm take a quick look and then come back okay so let's look at an example so here we have a graph which is six nodes and the nodes are connected as shown there. Now we are trying to find the shortest path from U to all other nodes in the network. So initially, n prime in step zero will consist only of U. Now, U is directly connected to X, W, and V. It's not connected directly to Y and Z. Hence, the values, that is D, D values, to V, W, and X, will be 7, 3, and 5, respectively. As there's no direct path to y and z, those values are going to be infinity. Now, if you look at the predecessor node, all the predecessor nodes are u. This is because to reach any of these nodes, the previous node that we know currently is u. For example, w can be reached with a cost of 3 and through u at this stage of the algorithm. Now, in the next step is to find the, the node which has the least d value. In this case, dw is the least. So we pick w and add it to n prime. Now, if you recall, what we have to do is we're going to update the d values or the costs of the estimates of the paths to all the nodes in the network. So now, if we try to update the cost to to the node v we have an initial cost of 7 now see that from see from the graph that you can reach 
w from u with a cost of 3 as we can see from the table dw has a cost of 3 and the direct cost from w to v is also 3. So we are going to compare 7 with 3 plus 3 that is 6. So 6 is less than 7 and hence the least cost path to v, to v is now going to become 6. If you look at the path to x, the current estimate of the path is 5. And if you go through w, the current estimate to w is 3. And if you add the direct link cost, which is 4, you get a value of 7. And you're going to compare 5 and 7. And 5 is minimum. Hence, dx is 5. Okay. The same thing can apply when we calculate the path to y, which is going to be 11, simply because initially we had infinity. Now, dw in the previous state was 3. And you add the direct link cost, which is cwy, which is 8. Hence, you get the value of 11. Okay. So, if, you, if I just go back to the previous step in the algorithm, what we're doing here is the d values, you always read from the table. The C values, you always read from the graph. Okay, so this is something that is really important. Once again, I'll repeat it so that you understand this. The D values are read from the table and the C values are read from the graph. Okay, so let's move on here. So now in this step, this is where we left before we went to the previous slide. So here, the, the least known with the least cost is X, which has a value of five. So we pick X, in the next step and we add it to n prime okay now what we are going to do is we're going to update the cost to all the other nodes which are not in n prime that is v y and z now is there a better path to v through x the answer is no and you can do the do the math and you'll find that there is no better path hence the value remains six Similarly, there would be no other better path to y because dx is actually a value of 5 and there is a direct link to y from x, but that is value of 7. Uh, 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 so that adding 5 and 7 will give you a value of 12. We're comparing that to 11. Hence, we stick with the value of 11. Now, to z, there is a new path. Now, the direct cost of the path for, to x that is dx is 5. Now this direct link cxz is 9 and hence you add those two that is 5 plus 9 which gives us 14. We compare that with infinity because that is the original estimate to z. So 14 is obviously better than infinity. Hence we have 14. Now note the p-values at this step. You see 14 that is to dz was reachable through x. Okay, so z is reachable through x. Hence, pz in the step is denoted by x. Now, once again, we'll repeat this process. And then the next uh, node which has the least cost path is v, which is 6. We choose that. We add v. And now we're going to update the cost to y and z. Now, dv has a, is a value of 6. Now, from V, the direct link has a value of 4. So, adding DV and 4, that is C, V, Y is 10. And that is a better than the, or in the current estimate, which is 11. Okay, so we make it 10. And now you can see that PY became V. And this process will continue. Okay, so there's no change to, uh, to the path to Z. Now, in the next step, we pick the least value, which is Y. It is that 10, we add y, we see that now there is a better path to z through y because d dy is 10 and the direct link is 2, which is which gives us a value of 12, which is better than our current estimate 14, and we add that. Note that the py, the sorry, the pz changed from x to y because this new current estimate is through y. Now the algorithm would terminate at this, after this step where we pick, there's only one value, that is dz, which is minimum. We pick that, we actually add z to n prime. 
Now all nodes have been added to n prime and the algorithm would stop there. Okay. So here are some nodes that are very important. Now to construct the shortest path, we can use these predecessor nodes to find out what is the shortest path from a node to all other nodes in the network. Now in this particular example, we didn't find the two nodes had the minimum path. So if you have two, two minimum values, you could pick any one of them. Dijkstra's algorithm would run fine. So ties can be broken arbitrarily. Let's now see how we can use the predecessor uh, nodes to construct the shortest path tree. So now from the table, you can see that to reach x, the p, p of x is u. So there is going to be a pointer from u to x. Similarly, to reach w, the shortest path is through v. So there's going to be a pointer from u to w. Now, if you look at v, the shortest path if it is through w. So there's a pointer from w to v. Now for y, the shortest path is from is through v because p y in the last step is v. So there, there is a link from v to y. Now to reach z, the shortest path is through y. And hence there is a pointer from y to z. Now once you have this tree from this graph, you can find, you can just trace the pointers and find out the shortest path from u to all other nodes in the network. For example, to find out the shortest path from v, from u to y, what we have to do is we just have to start from u, take w, go to v, and then go to y. And you'll have, and that would be your shortest path from u to y. So now let's look at another example. I filled out this entire example. So here we have another six node network and we are trying to once again find the shortest path from u to all other nodes in the network. Now, initially u is connected to v, x, and w directly with values two, one, and five. And that's what is seen in step zero of the table. It's not directly connected to y and z, hence those values are infinity. Now we just select x because that is the minimum cost, dx is minimum, and we put x to n prime. Now we update the table you find that both dv and dy have a value of two. So there is a tie, both of them can be minimum. In this case, you can break the tie arbitrarily. And I just happen to choose y. You could choose v as well, it wouldn't matter. So you choose y, you update, you only the cost to w changes. And there is a new cost to z, which is four. Now you pick v because that's going to be minimum. And this process is going to continue. You keep adding the minimum nodes until all the nodes have been added to n prime. Okay. So now let's look at the tree that we yield. This is the shortest path tree. If you look at the predecessor nodes and from this, you can actually find the shortest path from you to any other nodes in the network. Now, what would be the forwarding table? That is going to be stored in u because u is running this to find out the shortest path from u to all other nodes in the network. Now this is a forwarding table. So what u will store is which direction should I forward a packet so that it reaches the destination. Okay. So now u is directly connected only to v and x. Now every other node in the network has to be reachable if it's reachable through v and x. Now so if you look at this table, say you're looking at destination v. v is directly reachable through u. So the link that is stored in the forwarding table is uv. For x, x is also directly reachable and the link is ux. Now all the other nodes, w, y, and z are reachable through x. So what u does is it stores ux as the link for all those other nodes. This means that when you gets a packet that is say destined for W, it is going to forward the packet to X because it knows that that's the direction in which it has to send the packet so that it reaches its final destination. 